Welcome to the Planet Rock Podcast, the hottest show in the cosmos. Get ready for insight and inspiration right here on Planet Rock with your special guest, Dee Dee Magno Hall. And your cosmic guide through our ever-changing space and time, I'm your host, Raquel Herring. Welcome to the Planet Rock Podcast, your go-to spot for all things relationships, personal growth, and navigating life's twists and turns from the depths of dating and marital dynamics to the heights of spiritual journeys, entrepreneurship, money, pets, and plants. We explore every facet of human connection. I'm Raquel Herring, your cosmic companion on this wild ride called life. Each episode of Planet Rock is packed with insights and inspiration to help you thrive in this ever-changing world. From heartwarming stories to candid conversations, we're here to empower you and uplift your spirits. Tune in every Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time on Envision-Radio.com, where praise meets talk for some real talk, real people goodness. And don't forget to catch the video replay on YouTube every Saturday. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with all of our latest episodes. Follow me on social media for some updates dates and swing by my website at raquelherring.com to stay connected. Relax, settle in, and let's rock your world one relationship at a time right here on Planet Rock. On this episode of Planet Rock, we have such a special episode, a special person here with us, beautiful Dee Dee Magno Hall. I'm thrilled to connect with my fellow Mouseketeer, the incredible, I'm gonna say it again, talented Dee Dee Magno Hall from our days on Disney Channel's all new Mickey Mouse Club to Dee Dee's phenomenal career, voice acting as Pearl from Steven Universe and roles in Dogs in Space, Firebuds and more. She has truly done it all, not to mention her stunning performances on Broadway in Miss Saigon and Wicked. Join us for an inspiring chat about faith, family, and her remarkable journey. Welcome, Dee Dee Magno Hall. Oh my goodness, Hi. what an introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rocky, for having me on your podcast. This is so amazing. Thank you for coming on. It's wow. so awesome that we get a chance to sit down and just talk. I mean, it's yes. been so long. I won't even say how many years, but, you know, we've had chance mm. to get, you know, chance to, you know, chat a little bit at different events, but not like this, not to get no, out no. Like, the, really connect. The, yes, absolutely. This is a very special uh, opportunity to, to, to do that. Exactly. Cause I was, we were just talking about how we have gotten together a few times in the past few years, but everything seems so rushed and, right. ru you know, getting one place to another and then not really having an opportunity to sit down and really chat. So I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you. So let's just jump right into it. You're working on some incredible voiceover jobs, projects like Firebuds, uh, Kiff, and Dogs in Space. What yes. are those projects? Uh, oh, my goodness. Well, um, <laughs> these, uh, these shows that I have voiced on, um, they're some of them I've I've already completed. Um, okay. There is the only one that I'm still currently working on every once and again because I'm uh, um, I'm not a regular on the show, but I'm I just uh, I, I'm a guest uh, voice actor on Kiff. So yeah. that's sort of been recurring, uh, recurring role. And um, and every once and when whenever they choose to write me into the script, they'll give me a call or send me an email and say, are you available to record on such and such a date? So Kif would be the only one that I'm currently working on uh, whenever they write me into the script. Okay. And yeah. do you have any, any other projects that's happening right now or? Well, I, the, the past, the past few years, actually, um, I, I, 
I've been really heavily getting back to my my faith. I've the, my mm-hmm. husband and I have gotten very heavily involved in our church. Um, yeah. So we are part of a church plant in Las Vegas, North Las Vegas. Um, we moved from California to Vegas to be closer to family during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Right. And my my niece was actually the one who introduced us to this church. It's called Central Church. It's in Henderson. It's a really, really big, I think some would say like a mega church. Oh, wow. Uh, but, but our son at the time, he was, I think he was only like 16. But uh, he, in the middle of service, just felt the Holy Spirit move inside of him and encourage him to get baptized. And wow. at that time, we had just been going to the church for a few months. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, you know, we both my husband and I were like, okay, well, I guess this is our church. Our son wants to get baptized here. Nice. And ever since then, ever since then, we we just got closer and closer to our faith. We started volunteering and then we started serving and we started um, uh, getting you know, just deeper into that whole servanthood um, ministry Mm -hmm. where, you know, somebody asks us to like maybe lead a Bible study or like lead groups um, where we were ill-equipped to do so, but we didn't want to say no to God, right? So (laughs) so that's kind of like what we're doing. Like, at the moment, if you ask me, that's we're 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 really really just mm. we just go in to the ministry, and uh, we're tra- part of like said, this part of this church plant. And both my husband and I are leading worship there, and we it's a pop up church at the moment. We're literally popping up every Sunday and tearing down at an elementary school. Um, okay. And uh, until we find, you know, until God provides us a, a more uh, permanent space, yeah. um, but that's that's pretty much what we're doing right now. So we also have uh, community. Um, we have it's called the, the gathering, where we have live uh, worship and a live message from our uh, location pastor, and then we go into Bible study on Wednesdays. So. Uh, yeah, so it's it's a pretty. I guess it's a busy it's kind of like a, it is a busy schedule, yeah. you know. So, um, not to say that I have like completely not, you know, well, not to say that I've completely like left the business, you know, the show business, mm-hmm. but yeah. um, things have been sort of like slower on that end. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said. Kif would be the only one that I that I still kind of voice on every yeah. now and again. I'm still um, auditioning every once in a while for voiceover, but um, television and film has sort of taken a little backseat at the mm-hmm. moment, and I'm fully just focused and invested into this church and yeah. um, into this ministry. You know, yeah. not something that I ever anticipated. <laughs> yeah, I never would have thought that this is where I would be right now, but this is where God is having me. And um, I couldn't be more grateful. So. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Cause it goes in seasons, you know, sometimes you'll have that season where you're working and then it's that season where it's just the focus on your spirit, you focus on God, focus on connecting, you know, with him and being in the word and being in praise and worship. I remember that time. Like I was going to church five days a week and I would laugh like prior to that when people are going to church all the time, or like knocking down church doors, you know, that would be like the thing that would be like the joke. Right. But then it happened to me and I had to be there. I was thirsting to be there. Like I couldn't wait to get there. What we're going to talk about today, what songs, you know, just the heart of like just being like married to Jesus and, you know, that whole experience, so much came out of that. So I totally understand that those are, it's just, it's that season where it's the focus is on him and connecting with him. So good for you. It's an awesome place. And with your husband, I mean, I love that. I got marriages that, you know, that show us that, that they're in church together. They're like really, focused on the Lord together, it makes Mm -hmm. such a difference and that they're staying together. Oh my gosh. 
I love marriage. I pray for people marriages because I really want to see people stay together and be happy in love together. Like, Amen. Yes. That. So yeah. Yes. I yes. Just, well, you guys have been married a long time. Yes, we're we're um we're going on twenty two years. Yeah. So <laughs> I know. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. God. Yes. Yes. Um, I I really am so thankful that God has blessed me with a husband who loves the Lord, who puts yes. God first, and it it really really couldn't. I, I just couldn't be more thankful um, wow. that we get to do life together and yeah. that we can be in this ministry together. And, um, you know, like I said, we never would have imagined that this is where God would have us. Yeah. But he and I, and not to be boastful because it's all glory to God, but like we're we're leading Bible studies in our house and like, and at church and it's like, what are, what is our life right now? <laughs> it's so wild. Um, yeah. And I'm currently actually, oh, you asked me what I'm doing now. I'm like, I'm currently um, taking a Bible 101 course at the church. Nice. I'm trying to learn. Yeah. I'm trying to learn the Old Testament and I'm in the middle of writing my paper on Ecclesiastes which by yeah. the way if if anybody's ever if everybody like anybody has ever wanted to read about what is the meaning of life yeah. Ecclesiastes is uh, is really a heavy heavy book and wow. um, one that I really didn't expect to read from the Bible you know but mm -hmm. um yeah. Yeah, something it's something like just mind blowing, um, but uh, but yeah. So that's that's currently what I'm doing. I'm a student, and I haven't written a paper in decades. So I <laughs> don't I don't really know if I'm doing it right, <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best and give God the rest because that's all I can do really. That's right. Oh my gosh, the Old Testament is so amazing. I was just talking to my friend about the Old Testament last night. Like we should just like study it and go back, go over it because it's so rich in stories, so rich in relationships. And I always say like, if you want a soap opera, you read that Old Testament. You have a soap opera where you're gonna laugh, you're gonna cry, you're gonna go on this whole emotional roller coaster, and you get connected with the Holy Spirit, with God, and just be like, Lord, what does that mean? And where is that mm -hmm. in my life? Where where is this showing up? This scripture. It's so. I said that's a time again where I was just thirsty and get so excited about the Old Testament because it's just so much stuff going on, and you realize. I wow, this is really happening in life in general. Right. Exactly. That's, that's, that was my exact same feeling. Like I, I was discovering things or like I had read scripture. I had read these scriptures before, but I love going back to it and then getting some like new nugget of information. Yeah. Um, and the, and the, the, the crazy good part of it all is that there's this arc, you know, from like connections from the old Testament, the new Testament, and like stuff that I never even knew. I didn't even know how to read the Bible at once, you know, before. And, and I'm so grateful that I'm taking this course because I am learning so much almost like, and my brain, okay, I'm almost 15. I know that you just had a birthday. Happy yes, I did. birthday. Thank you. You're making it look fabulous. Thank fabulous. you so much. <laughs> um, but uh, but like so, my brain. I'm like, please, please, God, help me retain this information. Uh, yeah, but um, but it is. It's so amazing just to see God working through His His Bible, through His yeah. words, His wisdom. And, yeah. And how we can like literally take His words and and apply it to our lives in a real tangible way, even though these words were written thousands of years ago, they are right. so, they are so, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it's amazing how it's so relevant even today. Yes. Yeah. You know? So, well, let's, I say like, I, when they would say like, it's the living word, like at first I really didn't understand that, but I'm like, it really is living because mm -hmm. it will meet you where you are. Because like you said, you've read yes. scriptures before, but now reading them again, it's like, hmm, like you, you 
get them where you are right now. Mm-hmm. And before mm-hmm. you got them where you were at that time, but now you're in a different place and it's meeting you there to give yeah, you new yeah. revelation Amen. about yes. this life and about God and your relationship. And oh man, I love it. I love that. <laughs> for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I know. I'm so grateful. All glory yeah. to God. So I, now I'm not trying to like switch the roles here, but um, so when you said that you were in that season at one point, like uh, I, cause I'm like trying to figure stuff out too, like, because mm-hmm. I've been, I feel like I've been in that se- this season for like, uh, uh, you know, a couple years now. And yeah. uh, I, I felt like, because being in the business, you know, since we were like 13, 12, 12, 13 years old, this is everything that I all, this is the only thing that I've known how to do, you know? Right. And, um, and it's almost like it's, there's a shift that's happening and, um, you know, I, 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 it was almost like a little bit sad because Mm -hmm. I wondered, am I ever gonna, am I ever gonna work in this business again. It's because I, because God has revealed so much to me in Mm -hmm. these past few years. Mm -hmm. My eyes have been open to a lot of things that I thought I knew, but I'm like, whoa, (laughs) you know, I'm mind blown. My eyes are so open. And, and it's like, you know, how the people say, you know, I can't unsee that, (laughs) you know, anymore. Yeah. I have seen and and God God has has really just like revealed some things to me his truth in just the world yeah. and and everything and so I feel like I'm still kind of in that season where I'm like having to let go of yeah. some things like I'm in a pruning season right now where God is yeah. sort of like you know pruning me and cutting things out or maybe giving me a chance to make that choice and mm-hmm. Um, I, I just saw a video and I think it was my Lynn actually fellow mm-hmm. musketeer who yes. she was saying, she was talking about, uh, you know, um, a purpose. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I also had uh, this conversation with another good friend of mine, um, Keisha Sharp, who is also an actress director. She's, you know, uh, yeah. she's done so many things in the yeah. business and how she says, well, this isn't you know, being an actor, being a director is not my purpose. Mm-hmm. And and my Lynn has also sort of revealed that to me too. Um, but it is, it can be something that, that leads me to my purpose or helps me right. with my purpose. And right. I think I'm kind of in a, I'm in a, I'm in a stage in my life where I'm like, God, <laughs> what, 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 what am I supposed to do here? And, right, you know, I'm like right. kind of, I, I'm, I'm in a lot of, a lot of prayer time, a lot of just being still and waiting. And, um, yeah. but then also I know, I know that I have to move as well. I can't just be yeah. idle, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. And I was going to ask you, because you said you were in that season Yeah. and like, what, what for you, I mean, I know everybody's experience is different, but what for you was that turning point of like, all right, I'm that back turning, or I'm doing this. Yeah. <laughs> that turning point for me was music because I didn't want to do music anymore. I really mm-hmm. was, I was, I was trying, like, like you say, working, this is what you know. And now I'm just like in church going five times a week. I'm like, I am just so excited about it. And yeah, I'm like, where, where am I going with this? But he kept like talking to me about music and I was like, no way, no way. I, I'm cool with just being here. I'm cool with just going every day. Don't, don't talk to me about music. Like I almost was like, I just rather you not talk to me if we're going to talk about music. I don't want to do it. And he would not leave me alone <laughs> about this music. And it was like growing on the inside of me. It kept growing and growing. And even though I am in church, even though I am like, you know, talking the word and on the praise and worship team, even going to classes, it was still like that fight in me. Like, I can't, I just can't go back there, you know? And he was relentless. And it, like I said, kept growing and growing. And I was like, if I don't do something about this, if I don't submit 
I'm not going to be at peace. I'm not going to be able to find the peace that I'd like to have, even studying the word and stuff, right? So at that point, I just like, I, I talk about it in my book. I'm just like, Lord, I'm going to do it. I, I, I submit to you. And that's when like things opened up for me back in music to like, like where I feel like I found my voice. Um, I feel like I didn't really have my voice before. I didn't know what I really even wanted to do. Oh, I knew it wasn't music. And <laughs> and then when when that happened, it's like writing came to me so fast. I was I never really wrote songs before. And now here I am writing songs, full songs myself. I mean, melodies were coming at me. Like the first song, I remember when I got off my knees after submitting and then the Lord was like, put, um, the playlist together of all the songs producers have sent to you. The song mm. that I had gotten like a year before or two years before, I didn't think that was for me because it had like a country twang to it. Mm. And once I heard it, oh my gosh, I couldn't even stop the thoughts. It was just coming so fast at me. The words, the melody, um, the uh, vocal arrangement for backgrounds and everything. I was like, what? Is this wow. what writing has always been? Oh my God. <laughs> This is amazing. And from then on, I just made myself available to the Lord that whenever he would get me up to write uh, or listen to songs, um, that's what I would do. It's time to like get into worship. So and out of worship is where I wrote the song. So I would be worshiping first and then I would hear go play a song, go down the list and I'd play a song and boom, it just starts speaking to me and my heart is just like pouring out. And yeah. that was like the love, how it came back to me for music. And I haven't really stopped doing the music. I do go through those periods again where, no, no, I'm not doing it. And I'm at like that period right now, like, mm, I like what I'm doing here. Uh, but I think music must be it for me because it's mm -hmm. like he'll, he'll start putting that in my ear. All right, it's time to get back to it. You, you got to get back to it. And I love the praise and worship. And I found that love there because I'm like, worship, oh my gosh, it's just so amazing how reciprocal it is. And it's like I would be like, if I'm singing in front of people, look, don't even look at me. Close your <laughs> eyes, just be in the spirit because it's not about me. And that's what I love about worship. I don't have to mm -hmm. entertain. I don't have to do, I don't have to keep your, anyone's interest. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're either going to be in with the Lord or not and, and just mm -hmm. like let it move you. Don't look at me, just focus on you and your relationship with the Lord so he can open your heart and speak to your heart. And it's not, I love it. It's just about him. And you're just yes. the being used and he's like bringing it into you for, you know, whatever he wants to speak out to others. And you're singing the song that goes to them. And then they're like loving it. And then it comes back around. It's just like this reciprocal. And I love it in that space. I'm like, if I could, I just want to stay in that space of just being, because I don't see anybody. I don't hear anybody. I'm not even listening to myself anymore, which is strange because I'm like listening the whole time because you want to make sure everything's perfect. You know, we talked yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds right. I did that run right. I did this. Okay, good. But in that moment of that worship, you're thinking nothing about that because it's solely focused on God. And I mm -hmm. love that space. So that's oh. what happened to me. <laughs> amen. Amen. I love that you said all of those things because sometimes like you were just bringing me to tears, just listening to you say that because I feel like those, that's what I feel. That's what I feel when I'm worshiping, when I'm in praise and worship. And it's, I, I can't, sometimes I can't put into words. I was just telling Mylin before I got on the call with you mm -hmm. that sometimes I can't put into words the things that I'm feeling and the 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 feeling of like it just it's just overwhelming yeah and i the only thing that i can describe is the holy spirit is yeah. just oh just taking over and yeah. everything that you just said i can absolutely 200% relate to <laughs> when i'm praise and worshiping that's just yeah. what it is it's not yeah. about me it's nothing to do with me it has everything yeah. to do with god and um yeah it, it's it's really an amazing encounter and experience that you can't 
describe it's a it's such a personal a personal thing a personal relationship with jesus yeah it's like you've transcended to another space Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you're just Mm -hmm. in that space with the lord it feels safe it feels like you're encompassed in love it's like you're at peace you feel rest it's an amazing space to be in and when you can get there I mean, sometimes it may take me that moment to get there. But once I'm just like release and let go, I'm in a whole nother space. And like everything that's in the Bible, every word that I've heard from the Lord, every word that I've read, everything's true. I don't, I don't doubt it. I don't reason it. Everything is whatever he said. That's what it is. You know, so I know that I'm going to send it someplace else. (laughs) That's right. Amen. He is the truth. I'm going through all that stuff, you know, but not in worship. Mm -hmm, Yeah. mm -hmm. Uh, Wow. Wow. Oh my gosh. (laughs) This is such a great conversation of this experience. Yeah. I, it's, it's been, it's, it's one that I had, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of um, conversation about, you know, outside Mm -hmm. of family and close friends and, um, you know, my church family, because I see them so often now. And with the Bible studies and the women's retreats, um, you know, it's, it's really an amazing place to be. But I know that, I know that um, because it's not about me, I feel like, almost like I can't just keep this to myself. I have to share this, which, you know, and and knowing that every good thing in my life, every blessing comes from the Lord, it yeah. doesn't even belong to me. And so I, and then I'm also learning that about, you know, in, in, um, in the book of Ecclesiastes, you know, to like, mm-hmm. let go my, my grip, you know, let go yeah. of, uh, you know, trying to hold on to something. Yeah. Um, it's hard. Know, and, and yeah, yeah, it it's is. It is for me. Yeah. To let go and just be like, everyone always tells me, you know, you got to just, just trust and let go. And I really had that conversation with God. Like I had to just come to the point where, yeah, trust was my issue mm-hmm. and I'm still working on it. And I'm like, it should be so easy. He's God. Yeah. It should yeah. be easy. It should be easy <laughs> but to that... trust him. But, right. it's but that's why. All. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. But that's why he's God and we are not. And so like, right. Right. <laughs> that's why it's exactly. not hard for God. It's hard for us, but it's, it's not hard, hard for, for us. Yeah. 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 But that's why we need him. That's, I mean, that's the, that's all, that's the whole thing too. It's just yeah. recognizing that I can't do this on my own. I need, I, I need the Lord. So, um, yeah. you know, and it does take it takes some pressure off, you know, it takes the pressure off of your shoulders. It's because if we really do, like you said, submit, you know, gosh, all you have to do is just let it come off when I submit it, just felt it, man, it felt so much better. Like I don't have to perform for anyone. I don't have to be right for anyone or whatever that right is. It was Mm -hmm. just solely an audience of one and that was yes. God and just doing Amen. what he says. And mm-hmm. like, I just wish I would like to be in that space all the time <laughs> of trust, surrender, like, and not think about those things. And there, thank God I have people around me who are like, you know, just, you just got to go with life. Just go with the Lord and trust. It's easy. But mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you said, it's that holding on because I have desires. I have wants. I have these things, Lord. And you can't make a move. You can't make him do it in your time. He's going to do it in his time, it, providing it's his will. And then that becomes the other thing. That's that. I think that's part of my battle that I have to put that gauntlet down that I can't do it without him. I can't do anything. I can't even take a breath without mm-hmm. him, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, but it goes to that with career and those desires and things that, you know, it, they just be earthly things and they shouldn't matter. And I'd be like, Lord, it shouldn't matter, but it does. Lord, I live down here. I live here. 
Exactly. Oh, that's exactly that's what I was going to say. It's like we are we're living in this world, you know, so we do we have to do life on this world while we're here, you know, temporarily. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we are. We are in the world, but we're not of it. And, and then just right. knowing that we can lean on God, just knowing yeah. that we can come back. And he, he, I love that he reminds us through worship, through relationships, through his word. I, I'm so grateful that we have this guide. We have a guide yeah. in the Bible. Yes. So, um, but yeah, but it is, it is tricky because, you know, our hearts, <laughs> our hearts yeah. and our desires and our human, our flesh, you know, but, yeah. um, but it's, that's why it's so important to be in community. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I, that's why I cherish, um, you know, community and I cherish relationships yeah. that, that with people who, um, you know, who also are putting God first. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's, that's another thing too, just being in the business because it, the business that I, the only thing that I know that I've been, you know, basing my, what I thought was my purpose on for so long, um, it's really just shifted my mind, you know, changing mm -hmm. my mind about a lot of things, a lot of uh, work and career yeah. and drive, motivation. Like, what am I, what am I putting my focus on, and why? Yeah. You know, my my why. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but it's it's really it's really shifted my. The, the trajectory of my of my life and and in yeah. in, in, a, in a, a good and profound way although yeah. it is still a learning process and 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 like you mentioned the the flesh you know the the human yeah. desires heart desires uh, yeah. so it's not to say that I've like completely like I'm done with the you know I'm done with it but I definitely see things in in a different light, different and I and yeah. I I just want to glorify God. You know, I just want to do yeah. what God wants me to do. You know, yeah. So yeah. how can I how can I you know do that? How can I still you know still be in this in this world or be in this business, but glorify God in doing right. that? You know, yeah, trust in Him. Yeah. Trusting him and just letting letting him do what he wants with your life and know that all things work together for our good. So, yeah, it, it seems so simple. <laughs> <laughs> it seems so simple. But, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And you can't rush the season. That That's the other thing. Like, you can't rush it. You can't try to push through it it's it's going to go its time its duration of how long he chooses for you to be in that season before he moves you on to do something else and yeah. it's being comfortable yeah. with that trusting that and just leaning on him 100 percent of the time that's the work yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the work you know I, I mean that's why i am that's why i'm so grateful that I have um, this church family that yeah. God is really, really working in me and um, and my husband and our family and and this church. It's like we're witnessing life change in an amazing way, and uh, it's undeniable. It's undeniably God, you know. I so, love it. I, yeah, that I'm just, I'm just, I just want to do what he wants me to do. And that's basically what I'm doing right now. So that's all, right. that's all I, that's all I want to do, you know, and, and, and fighting the, you know, the temptation to still, you know, go back into my past and like, you know, it's, it's a, it's a constant battle, but you know, I, yeah. um, but God is, is greater. He, yeah, he, who is, you, he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. So that's right. And, and that's wonderful. You have that desire to say, I just want to do what he wants me to do. I know, mm -hmm. I know. And then you go through moments where you can do that and it feels so good. Like I'm just doing what he wants me to do. And it <laughs> yes. feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All, all right. Well, let's, let's talk about, Pearl and Steven Universe. That was that's a big deal. Yeah, Pearl. you know, I <laughs> Pearl has been <laughs> Pearl has uh has been um 
such a fun I have to admit, it was a fun ride. It was a fun character to, to voice. Mm -hmm. And that that came, you know, that audition came, um, whew, like, I want to say thousands of auditions. Wow. It felt like it anyway. It felt like I had been auditioning for thousands of auditions. It maybe it wasn't that, that many. It felt like it. It felt like that. Yeah. Uh, and I actually was, I, I, I reached out to my agent and I said, I don't know if, if I'm cut out for this. I'm like, I have auditioned for so many voices. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what's, what's the deal? And he says, you got to just stick with it because this is sort of, this is the world of voice acting. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the same people voice on multiple uh, either wow. cartoons or video games um, they they go with people that they know and and these mm. these very talented voice actors can oftentimes do multiple voices mm. um, and so when Steven Universe came along it was I had to just treat it as one of those hundreds of thousands of auditions that I had done, do my best, give God the rest and then forget about it you know which right. was you know it's tough to do but you know, that's just yeah. what you have to do, the attitude that you have to have. And so when I auditioned right. for it, it was a character I had, I, I knew very little about. All okay. I knew was that it was it was um, a character, in, to my understanding, that she uh, was a, um, a part of a crystal gem kind of team that they right. wanted to fight evil, uh, that she also was going to be helping to raise a small boy. Um, you know, he's like an orphaned boy uh, or or lost his mother, I think. Um, I'm trying to remember the description of the character. And like, but, but I thought, okay, well, I'm a mom. I have two kids. I can do that. And then yeah. also it was musical that the show is musical and they wanted, they wanted uh, the characters, most of the characters, if not all of the characters to sing. And I okay. thought, oh, cool. Uh, so part of my audition was, uh, was a vocal audition, was a singing audition. And um, so I just did it. I did the audition the best that I knew how, the best as I could. And then I, uh, when they called me in for this, it was like, I guess the equivalent to the screen test. It's like, right. you know, final callback. Oh and I God. got to uh, do some voice acting with some other um, potential uh, voice actors in the studio at Cartoon Network in California. Ooh, and, yeah. and so we were just in this room and we were kind of playing off of each other, going over the script, the pilot. And then um, I just remember the, the creator, Rebecca Sugar, very talented young lady, uh, up and coming writer, and she was maybe not up and coming, but she had already worked on uh, shows like Adventure Time and some several others. But right. she's um, she's an artist, and also she's a musician, and she's a writer, and and so she's she had mentioned that she wanted us to use our natural voices. So mm. when I I didn't really have to think too much about the character of voice um, yeah. coming up with that voice. It was just my voice, maybe. A little bit exaggerated, you know, okay. uh, but it's still my voice. <laughs> yeah. And then I just would sing my own voice. But when I auditioned for the show, I had no idea, you know, what the show was really going to be about, where it was going to go. Um, uh, all I knew was that I was going to play a character with that was kind of like mom like, you know, yeah. motherly type of character, somebody that would, you know, watch over a young boy. And and I thought I could relate to that. I'm a mom of two boys and and that she sings. And so um, I, I remember that Rebecca Sugar, the creator, said that she wanted um, uh, voice actors who could sing mm -hmm. and use their natural voices. And I was grateful that I didn't have to really it wasn't like too much of a stretch, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I didn't have to alter my voice too much. Although if I were to rewatch like earlier episodes to the more latter ones, there's definitely a progression in, you know, <laughs> at least, at least in like, you know, it just ex excitability in my voice. I, I, I really kind of just, I, I went all out. I mean, no, no barred, no holds barred. Uh, I don't know if that's a proper, um, uh, explanation, but no bars it was, held, it was no really bars hold something. We know what it uh, means. something like that. You yeah. know what I'm trying to say. Yes, we know. <laughs> 
And then I had no idea the success of the show, you know, that you really don't. I mean, how could you know, right? right. Only God knows. But right. uh, but it became very successful. And, um, you know, people, I, love it. It, people, people really, really loved that show. And yeah. uh, I mean, some it would take us to all of these conventions like San Diego right. Comic Con. I had never been to San Diego Comic Con. I knew that it was a kind of a big deal, but yeah. and I brought my brother because he knew about it's a huge it. Deal. So I, yeah, so yeah. we went, and I had no idea, but there was a very big following, lots of big fan, like a, a huge fan base, yeah. and. Uh, one thing I thought was interesting is uh, the fans, they really thought that Pearl was like a real life thing, you know, character. And I'm like, I, they would ask me questions like, so how would Pearl do this? Or how would Pearl think about this? And that I said, I said, you know, um, that's a great question for the person who created the show. I am Hi. simply a voice actor. I read the words that were written for me. Uh, um, but, but I am, I'm grateful that I was able to, to be part of a show that really had a long life on Cartoon yeah. Network and still exists on the interwebs. And, awesome. um, there's like a like new fan base and, but, uh, it has allowed me to, you know, to, to go to different conventions all over the country and, and mm -hmm. Canada and, um, wow. and still, you know, still touches the lives of a lot of different people all over the world in a in a positive way. The show yeah. in my in my opinion is it's a show it's about love for all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love that it's musical and visually it's beautiful um uh really catchy tunes. Um but yeah, there's no way that I would never I, there there's no way I would have known where the show yeah. was going and 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 where it would uh, lead uh you know the characters and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, uh, I'm just grateful to have had that very, very, it was a, it was a long, uh, it was a long gig. It was a, it was a nice. really good, really nice gig. It brought lots yeah. of blessings and I'm grateful for that. So. Yeah. What's been the most fulfilling part of voicing these beloved characters? Cause like, that's not the only one Pearl. I mean, like you said, you have Kiff and, and the other, and the other ones we spoke of at the top of the show, what's the most fulfilling part when voicing these characters? Well, um, you know, I, I, I've always wanted to, to voice a cartoon character since growing up. I watched all the Disney movies and I, Seems like so I much thought, fun. yeah, it would be fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, and then it really didn't matter what I looked like because all you're doing is listening to my voice. And so yeah. I think that that's the, like, I think that's the most fun yeah. that, um, you can pretty much play any character. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I loved that um, I could play around with different voices. Um, I could, um, I one, one time I had an audition for a two-year-old boy. Uh, oh. <laughs> I was supposed to play a two-year-old boy, just a voice of that. It was like a little boy, uh, his first words, you know, uh, oh, I wow. think it was uh, not think it was for uh, how I met your mother, that TV show, how I met oh, your God. mother and one of the babies, um, his first words. But it was for a two year old boy. And I thought at the time, my youngest was two years old. And I thought, well, this is so silly. Why am I trying to pretend to be like a two year old boy? I'm like, I'm going to have my son <laughs> audition yeah. as well. Yeah. So I did my take. I did my take, and at the time I was recording literally on my cell phone. And I recorded myself my saying the two lines, and then I I called my son in, and I said, I said, hey, bub, can I can just repeat after mommy? Just say what mommy says. And yes. I recorded him saying the same exact words. And wouldn't you know it? I submitted us both. He's the one who got the job. Wow. <laughs> he got it. <laughs> That was his first voiceover job. Um, so he's playing he's playing the the voice of baby Marvin. I think it's Marvin on how I met your mother. So oh, wow. he still gets he still gets residuals for that. That's awesome. Um, isn't that funny? It's just yes. so funny. But but like just things like that, like so random. Why I, you know, I, I tried to put on this voice of this two-year-old boy, but that yet I had my Real right, life, like, two year old. Why don't you just do it? 
Right. Um, but but it was an easy one because it was only two lines. But if it's like a recurring role, you have to maintain that same tone, that same, you know, uh, that same voice, those dynamics. Mm -hmm. If you're yeah. a, a recurring role, you have to, you know, have continuity. And so I think mm -hmm. that's why they ask all, you know, adults to play I see in characters so yeah. that it can be consistent, you know, Yeah. because, um, you know, kids voices change, you know, right. and they, they, they age out. That's right. And, That's right. Uh, and so unless you, you know, unless you can keep that to that tone still, you know, that, that pitch in your voice, then they're going to have to go elsewhere, which is what, right. you know, what happens, uh, um, for lots of lots of uh, young kid child actors child voice right. actors they they right. their voices change because that's just you know what happens that's just what happens <laughs> right <laughs> but i mean you know, i would have to say go ahead no go ahead go ahead oh no i was just going to say that that that's basically what it is it's that it's fulfilling because um it's just so much fun to like you know put on like fun voice characters and then i yeah. loved doing steven universe because i got to sing also yeah so, um but yeah it's it's really a fun job i'm i'm, I'm grateful for all of the different things that i got to do um yeah. across the board and i and i do hope i can do some more as you know more opportunities god willing yeah will come along have you had to create voices for characters like the other other shows you've been on? Did you have to like see that character and like get into what would that voice sound like and create that voice? Yes, actually. So most of the time um, they will send the audition along with the drawing of the character that they're hoping to cast for. And okay. so you look at the based on the drawing of the character, you can kind of play around with different voices. Mm -hmm. Like um, I played an elder shrub in Dogs in Space. That's one of the I, I, I play a dog called Penelope. My character in the recurring character that I play in Dogs in Space is Penelope. And okay. so she, they actually asked me if I could try to do my best impression of, oh no, and I, my mind is escaping me, um, Joan Cusack, Joan Cusack. Oh. Okay. So they specifically asked for a Joan Cusack-like sound. Okay. And so for my audition, that's that I was just listening to Joan Cusack. I was just like trying to get her voice in my head. Yeah. So when I auditioned for it, that's the voice that I, that I tried to emulate. Now yeah. it's not perfect, you know, <laughs> but I did the best that I could. And then, um, and then I played another role in that same show called the elder shrub. And she's this, uh, she's like a, she looks like a tree stump or she's, a, uh, you know, she looks like a tree. She's a shrub. She's yeah, a, shrub, a shrub, but she's old. Yeah. <laughs> And so I had to come up with a completely different sound wow. to make her sound like an older, like, I can't remember what she sounded, but she sounds kind of like this. And she had like a Southern twang. And it was just, I love it. but it's yes. super, it's super fun to just like oh come up with gosh. these ideas. And then, Sounds you know, it's up to the, <laughs> it's up to the director and the writers and the, you know, the producers and they decide if they want to go with that voice or maybe like yeah ask you to put some little changes on it, give you some yeah. direction. But yeah, the oftentimes we work with a voice director and they'll, mm -hmm. you know, they'll try to, you know, just like a director in, who's, you know, on a film or television show, they try to pull mm -hmm. that performance out of you. They try to give you a, you know, coaching wise, give you some sort of direction to get that, you know, ultimate yeah. And what they're really and going uh, for. What they're yeah. looking for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they they obviously loved what you did. So, <laughs> yeah, they were like, she's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I hope so. I hope they're happy. I, you know, at the at the end of the day, I'm like, I just want them to be happy with it, you know, because the, they have, you know, they have a an idea, you know, right. a sound in their in their minds of what these right. characters sound like. And at the end of the day, I just want them to be happy with the sound that's produced. And, and so, you know. And then, and sometimes they'll be like, you know what, this didn't sound, this doesn't sound like what I was thinking about in my head, but we love it. It's let's just go with it. You know? Right. So right. You just never know. You just never know. But that's, so that's wonderful. The goal. How did you <laughs> get into the, the voice? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What? Oh, no, no. I just like, that's the, that's the goal. That's the goal. 
the yes. t- telling, telling the story, telling the story, yeah. telling the story. How did you get into voice acting? Well, I started out when I was living in New York um, while I was doing um, uh, Broadway, when I was doing Miss Saigon on Broadway. Um, yes. I started to audition for singing jingles. I was auditioning for uh, singing um, on jingle commercials. Okay. And and then when I made the move from New York to Los Angeles because I wanted to pursue acting in television and film. Yeah. Although you could still do that in New York, I was being encouraged by my my agent at the time to move to California. Yeah. And yeah. when I made that move. Um, into trying to still do jingle singing, uh, I had asked my then um, uh, television and film uh, agent if they yeah. could help me in the voiceover world. And so um, he very graciously uh, made a connection with a friend of his who was who happened to be an agent for voice acting. Okay. Or a voiceover agent. He introduced me to uh, my my current agent, Imperium 7, uh, my current agency, Imperium 7. Okay. And uh, as I went in and they gave me some copy, they gave me some some scripts and uh, they have they have an in studio uh, booth that okay. uh, I, I, I just went in that day. And I started reading these, you know, different for different characters, some that already pre-existed and some that were mm-hmm. new to me. And yes. I just did the best that I could. They came up and they made my own little reel right then and there. They're very quick. Oh, um, wow. And then and and then from that from that point on, they started sending me uh, to or sending my reel and and sending me auditions yeah. for anything from television shows to cartoon uh, cartoons commercials and, and and all sorts of different things video games oh wow and, okay. and that's when that's when the the hundreds of thousands of auditions started that's awesome well tell us about your success on broadway i mean you've had amazing remarkable success please tell us about miss saigon um wicked Yes. Yeah, so Miss Saigon is, uh, that was a show, a dream show of mine. I, I saw that wow. show while the party was in, was on tour in London. So I was wow. about 16 at the time. I, I saw the show with my mom and I believe Damon's mom and Tiffany's mom too. Uh, yeah. but at the time I was only 16 and there were some love scenes in the show that my mom was like, I think you're too young for this kind of show. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, cut to going back to, um, going back to, to the Mickey Mouse Club days, Fred, Fred Newman is the one who, who put that little bug in my ear about Broadway, about Miss Saigon. He told me about the show, which is the reason why I wanted to see it in London when we were there. But he told me about the show and he says, you need to pursue this show. You need to look into it. You need to audition for this role. And at the time, I did not know anything about Broadway. Yeah. But I bought the soundtrack after that conversation. I fell in love with the music. I got a chance to see the show in New in uh, in London, um, and then finally auditioning for it when I was about wow. nineteen years old. And it was my first Broadway, you know, show. And yeah. it was we were. I actually got the opportunity to understudy the main character. Nice. But then my parents had a trip planned for the Philippines, a family trip. So I actually turned down the initial offer to join the um, the company in Canada. Yeah. And I was heart I was heartbroken about it, but I just couldn't do that to my family. We had planned this trip to the Philippines. So I said I was going to be fast and I'm not. (laughs) So it turned out to be a blessing in disguise because um, I later was offered um, to play the actual role in the second national touring company. So, um, so my turning down that first opportunity led me to this other opportunity, which I actually originated the role on the touring company. And that's where I met my husband. So um, yeah, yeah, we we were in the show together. 
He is. That's, you know, he was in, he was in the show with me in, in Miss Saigon. We were both 19 at the time. And since then, you know, after getting married and we, we've done, we've done a handful of shows together, you know, nice. praise the Lord. Praise <laughs> we God. toured, yes, we toured, um, in Wicked together and, uh, awesome. and we did Next to Normal, um, in a theater in Los Angeles uh, called East West Players. And then we also mm -hmm. played opposite each other in Mamma Mia in Guam. Uh, and then we also did the oh Broadway. <laughs> I know. But we also did a show called If Then with okay. uh, starring Adina Menzel. Uh, and that was a Broadway show that toured. Uh, and then we did, we got to do that show together as well. So uh, wow. blessings upon that. blessings. I, I feel like God has really just blessed us. Um, yes. I have so much to be grateful for. But, you know, there's nothing like, you know, I, I, I love TV and film. I love doing voiceover. But there is nothing like live theater, you know, just being oh, on yeah. stage with that, um, yeah. you know, the orchestra and then the audience there yeah. and experiencing this journey alongside with you. And, you yeah. know, things happen when live theater, there's a lot of things that could possibly happen, like the helicopter in Miss Saigon doesn't come down or, <laughs> you know, the, the, you know, the just things people go up on their lines and they forget their lines <laughs> or like set pieces right, right. don't come on. But, you know, that <laughs> saying the show must go on and it really, right. truly does. It has to go. It has right. To it has to go on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dee Dee, for coming on. You're so beautiful, such a beautiful spirit, and it was so wonderful oh. having you on the show. I hope we can pick up again and do it again, and uh, I do look <laughs> forward to that time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rocky. I think you're lovely, too. Keep on doing what you're doing, you know? Thank yes. you. God, ble God bless you. God bless you, too. And thank you all for joining us on the Planet Rock Podcast. You could have been any place else, but you chose to come here and listen to me on Planet Rock, to listen to Dee Dee and hear all her beautiful stories. And we just thank you so much for coming by. And God bless you, too. And have a beautiful day. See you next week, Thursday, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, right here on Envision-Radio.com, Planet Rock Podcast. See you next week. Thank you. What an awesome show full of insight and inspiration. Thank you to our guests and listeners. Look forward to hearing us next week on Envision-Radio.com at 12 noon right here on Planet Rock.